Okay. So vaccines and antibiotics. So what are vaccines? It's a suspension of dead or weakened pathogens, the actual bacteria, the actual virus, but a weakened version or a dead version of it that will stimulate the production of antibodies in the blood. These antibodies will strengthen the immunity of the body and help protect it against a specific disease because if the antibodies are already in your system, then it's ready to recognize any foreign site of or that specific virus or bacteria as being foreign to your body and it's going to launch the white blood cell attack immediately. One of the important things that my wife did, for example, a few weeks ago is that she already had COVID last year. And just to make sure, because before they had the cell to take the vaccine, what she did is she actually took an antibody test. She can do an antibody test for a certain uh, virus, and she had lots of antibodies in her blood. So is she going to take the vaccine? No. Why? Because it will be defeating the purpose. She already has the antibody. So that vaccine can rather be used for someone else so that they can get antibodies. Not going to help her, but let's say, for example, uh, someone else has to take it that doesn't have COVID previously and don't have antibodies yet, that will help them. Okay, now, vaccines are made from live pass uh, pathogens grown in labs. Yes, you have a question? No, uh, we don't know, we don't know. Uh, COVID hasn't, uh, COVID-19 hasn't been lo there long enough, so we will know. Uh, so you will have to do an antibody test. We don't know how long the antibodies are going to stay in the body. They might stay there for six months, five months, four months, three years, ten years. We don't know. It, de it normally depends on the type of, um, on the pathogen itself and on your, your body's response to it. Um, so there's a lot of factors there that we don't know yet because COVID only has been around for a, a short while in terms of diseases. Okay, then, through various processes, they will then be killed or continually grown until they are much weaker than the original pathogen. Okay, so how do we administer these vaccines? There's several ways in which we can do this. Okay, we can actually give it via an injection or they can just scratch the skin uh, and when it can get into the skin, then that would be enough. You can also administer it probably orally, like you see there, depending on, uh, depending on the type of bug that we are talking about. Okay, so the antibodies remain in the blood for some time and if the person is infected by the live pathogen, the body's already ready. There's already antibodies that can destroy it. This ensures that the body has a long-lasting protection against a serious disease like polio, measles. In this case, we're looking at eliminating, of course, COVID. Okay, antibiotics. Okay, antibiotics are substances that are secreted by fungi, uh, such as, uh, that's the penicillin fungi there, uh, penicillium that produces penicillin. Uh, which grows on fruit, and streptomyces, uh, which grows in soil. Uh, these substances will kill bacteria. Notice what they're saying, they will kill bacteria. Will they kill viruses? No. Antibiotics do not work on viruses. We wish they did, because then it would have been an easy solution. These substances will kill bacteria, but do not harm living cells. Um, most pathogenic bacteria can maybe be killed by one antibiotic or another, although they are not effective against viruses. Okay, so antibiotic targets. Um, what the antibiotic does is it normally will target the bacteria, the cell wall of the bacteria, and that's why you do have cell walls. Does your cell have cell walls? Go back to grade 10. Go back to grade 9. Do your cells have cell walls? No, they don't. They have cell membranes, but they don't have cell walls. Plant cells have cell walls, bacteria have cell walls. We don't have cell walls in our cells. We have cell membranes only, not cell walls. And so it breaks down the cell wall of the bacteria 
and it may become unstable and eventually burst, and it may be exposed to an antibiotic like penicillin. The cell membrane may be damaged so that it may not be permeable anymore, which, when exposed to the antibiotic, just causes the cell contents to leak out. And then protein synthesis can be uh, can be com uh, cannot be completed, so it will stop the protein synthesis inside the bacteria, blocking the manufacturing of the cells, proteins, and enzymes. Okay, diseases caused by bacteria, ladies and gentlemen, remember we did diseases caused by a persista, and we also did one caused by a fungi. Now we're going to go through some uh, treated uh, diseases that bacteria are causing. So, hmm? they, uh, they can be treated. Okay, uh, this would be diseases, sorry, this would be diseases treated by um, antibiotics that's caused by bacteria. Antibiotics, okay. Tuberculosis, TB, but we do get multi-resistant TB, unfortunately. Um, strep throat is another one. And ear infections, okay, so all treatable by antibiotics since they are caused by bacteria. Okay. Now, I'm going to play you the Superbugs video now.